If you're a student of the dual cab ute scene, then you'll be all too familiar with the upward trend in pricing that's happening at the moment. Top spec versions of Thai built mid sized utes are fast approaching $90,000 in price, and with a new Ford Ranger around the corner, you can probably expect that climb to continue. That brings this into play. It's the Ram 1500 Express Crew Cab, and at $90,000, this older DS generation model is the most affordable Ram on sale. Question is, does it deserve to be cross shopped against the Hilux, Ranger, Amarok, or even the Toyota Land Cruiser 70 series? Let's find out. The Ram 1500 tested here is imported to Australia and remanufactured to right hand drive in Melbourne by Walkinshaw Automotive Group, the same people responsible for some of HSV's golden years. Ram Trucks Australia introduced a newer DT generation 1500 in 2021, but it will take you well into six figure territory. Mirroring Ram's strategy in the US, the local arm plans to continue selling the older generation but newly built DS Classic alongside the latest DT for the foreseeable future. In bone stock trim, the DS generation tested here still cuts a mean presence with 20 inch wheels, bulbous guards, blacked out features and a minimum 218 mm ground clearance. At 5.8 metres, it measures about 30 centimetres longer than your garden variety Hilux or Ranger, while a 1990 mm roof height ensures it will squeeze into most underground car parks. At the heart of the Ram 1500 is the proven 5.7 litre Hemi V8 petrol engine. Outputs are identical across DS or DT generation at 291 kilowatts and 566 newton metres, while drivers shuffled to all four wheels via an eight speed automatic transmission. Now, fuel use. Officially, it's rated at 12.2 litres per 100 k's claim, and with a 121 litre fuel capacity, you can expect about a thousand kilometres between refuels based on that average. That's the good news. The bad news, with fuel approaching about $2 a litre, you can expect to be paying about 250 bucks to refill from empty. The Ram 1500 isn't simply about going fast in a straight line either. Underneath, the full-time four-wheel drive system features both high range and low range ratios. Even in entry form, the interior of the DS Generation 1500 still presents really nicely. There's acres of interior space, segment leading storage, dual zone climate control, and excellent comfort on longer journeys. Being the most affordable model in the range, yes, you do without a few of the luxury niceties such as push button start, keyless entry, a nice feeling steering wheel, and even an electric park brake. There's a clunky foot operated parking brake in its space. If you want to get into semantics, you do get these big sunshades which extend as well, which is great if you're driving alongside the blazing sun, but only the driver's side has a vanity mirror, if you're that way inclined. We've said it many times before, but the Walkinshaw remanufacture process to right-hand drive is truly excellent. In isolation, you wouldn't pick the 1500 as an American-built left-hand drive vehicle perhaps except for the location of that parking brake on the right side of the cabin. There are more open cubbies and hidey holes here than you can poke a stick at, plus a middle storage console that can open up to a six seat if you choose to have it engineered and fitted with a lap sash seat belt at additional cost. Infotainment is controlled via an 8.4 inch centre screen fitted with the very proven Uconnect software that features in everything from Rams to Jeeps and Alfa Romeos as well. It's super fast, super quick and effective on the move. There's also a separate seven inch instrument cluster which gives you things like the speed readout and everything else. So it's all very user friendly, all very easy to get up to speed with and everything is as you'd want it to be. The one exception is that there are no steering wheel mounted controls to control things like the audio, the sat nav, things like that. You've got to control everything either via the screen or, or via all the switch gear underneath. My only other gripe is probably the reversing camera. It doesn't quite have the clarity of some other like-minded use. The 1500 covers most infotainment basics with the exception of digital radio and head-up display. 
As for safety, the DS Generation 1500 feels its age a little more, barely registering on our in-house checklist. Six airbags, tyre pressure monitoring, rear parking sensors, a reversing camera, and a well-honed stability control suite do win it back some points. Believe it or not, four-wheel disc brakes are still a unique feature for Utes as well, so full points awarded there. A rear seat with actual leg, shoulder and headroom. It's almost foreign for dual cab ute owners, but it is one of the really defining features of the Ram 1500. Once you're set up here, the outward view is terrific. And just like the front seat, this rear bench is super comfortable for longer journeys. Also surprisingly, the step up into the cab isn't that arduous either, thanks to side steps and grab rails as well. Look a little closer and it's a mixed bag for rear seat appointments. Air vents, cup holders, ISO fix attachment points and grab rails are present, but charging points or a flip down centre armrest are not. One handy feature is the entire rear seat base will fold up, allowing you to fit large bags and bulky items underneath. Now for many, this is where the Ram 1500 really mounts its case, the tray area. The bed itself is five foot seven long, or about 170 centimetres in our money. That's not all that different from a regular tie built dual cab ute, uh, but there is a little bit more length and a little bit more width, generally speaking, as well. You get four fixed tie down points, movable tie down points, also a divider that you can move up and down to, to break up the load space, as well as integrated lighting. And when you do lock everything up, it's all linked to the central locking system, so your cargo is safe. The other novel feature is this, it's called a Ram box. It's a four and a half thousand dollar optional extra with this vehicle. And it's basically designed to accommodate everything from tools to fishing rods, even ice. You can make this a mobile esky complete with removable rubber bungs. The 1500 features an 845 kilogram payload that is virtually line ball with smaller dual cabs. For all its size, it won't fit a full-size dirt bike on board with the tailgate up. And opting for those Ram boxes means you lose a fair chunk of tray space. But the 1500 excels with a four and a half ton brake towing capacity. And pull, it does. Okay, so we know that it's big, we know that it has a rumbling V8, and based on previous tests, we know that the Ram 1500 is absolutely terrific at towing. My question is though, would you really cross shop one against a tie built top spec dual cab like the Ranger, like the Hilux, for recreational or work purposes? That is the real purpose of this test. First things first, the size. Yes, it is big, yes, it feels broad in the driver's chair, uh, you've got a big bulging bonnet to look over and you do feel every centimetre of that 13.9 metre turning circle when you're in tight spaces. But with that said, the steering is light enough at low speed, you get ample outward vision both front and rear and the ride on coil springs is really seamless. It's a super pillowy, super comfortable ute to be in. The engine is central to the Ram's user-friendly demeanour. It happily ambles around town, between intersections and up to highway speeds with inherent refinement. Torque is available early in the rev count before peaking at just under 4,000 RPM. While the 8-speed gearbox provides an ample spread of ratios, facilitating either efficiency or performance. The 1500's key controls are really nicely calibrated. In fact, it kind of feels at odds with a big circa two and a half ton American truck because the steering is light at low speeds, it weighs up adequately, and the brake pedal as well provides plenty of bite and is nice and linear with its action. The other inherent feature with the Ram 1500 is just the way that it isolates you from what's happening underneath and outside. It's a really comfortable place to be, and in fact feels more like a car or an SUV with the way that it behaves over bumps and the way that it really does suppress outside wind noise, road noise, and tyre noise as well. The translation on rural roads or highways is that it's almost akin to floating along in a lounge chair. We didn't hitch a trailer this time round, partly because the 1500 is a known quantity in this department, with sure-footed towing and reliable power, even when approaching its four and a half tonne limit. 
In terms of payload, we threw as much as 600 kilograms on board and found the coil springs retain their control and composure in a range of scenarios. Now, while there are some small equipment omissions in order to get the Express crew cab to this price point, it foregoes little in the way of road-going performance and capability. My real gripe has been probably the halogen headlights. On low beam, it's almost like trying to light the road ahead with a candle, but on high beam, they tend to be sufficient. The other viewpoint for me, and it's probably a controversial one, the Ram 1500 DS generation goes without a lot of the modern safety driver aids but the translation on road is a pretty tranquil driving experience. A lot of people, if you're not too fussed about having that stuff on board, you're probably not gonna mind all the needless beeping and buzzing that tends to go on with a lot of those modern systems. Controversial, I know, but it's the way that a lot of prospective owners will probably feel. As for all important efficiency, the 1500 averaged 13.4 litres per 100 kilometres on test, across a 1000 kilometre trip that included a range of conditions and some payload testing. Given a regular dual cab ute will frequently average about 10 litres per 100, it's not all that far off the pace given the performance advantage. The Ram 1500 doesn't quite match up with the regular dual cab set where warranty and servicing are concerned. Offered with a shorter three-year, 100,000 kilometre warranty and free roadside assist for the same period. Ram does not offer cap price servicing, but officials say owners can expect to pay $1,812 for the first three years or 36,000 kilometres. The Ram 1500 clearly isn't everyone's cup of tea and for good reason. It's big, it's nearly double the price of an entry-level tie-built ute and for many Australians, you could easily say it's a little bit overkill for our roads. But the other side of the ledger shines a much more positive light on the big 1500. Against the more expensive tie-built dual cab utes, this older generation DS still has far more power, more comfort, and generally speaking, more capability to match. There's a lot to like about the Ram 1500, especially if you're already shopping at the top end of town.